Hello and welcome to my classroom and I will be helping you with your lesson in mathematics. This is module 5 for the first quarter with subject in mathematics for the grade 9 level and it's all about word problems involving quadratic and rational equations and for lesson 1 we are going to take up problems related to age. At the end of this video, you will be able to solve age problems involving quadratic equations. Make sure you already learned in your previous lesson on how to solve the roots of a quadratic equations using the four methods. By extracting the roots, by factoring, by completing the square, and by using the quadratic formula. And you should know already how to translate verbal phrases into algebraic expressions like for example the sum of b and y it will become b plus y because the word sum tells us that we need to add both variables b and y sometimes in solving word problems we use a formula that describes the relationship between the quantities present in the problem there are formulas for perimeter, area, circumference, volume, and a lot more. But more often, formulas are not given in the word problems. So before we can find the solution to the problems, we first need to translate the statements into mathematical expressions. To help you organize your solution to any kind of word problems, the following steps can help you. 1. We need to analyze the problem by reading and understanding the problem carefully. And you need to identify what is asked in the problem. Sketching or drawing the problem will help you and I will show you later how it is done. Then make a representation on one unknown number by a variable or letter. Then represent the other unknown using the same variable or letter. After analyzing the problem, you then formulate the equation. This is now the time you will apply what you have learned in translating verbal phrases to mathematical equation. Then after making it into a mathematical equation, you need to solve and interpret your answer. Then at step 4, Step 4 is optional, which is checking your answer. This is to verify that your answer is true or not. So let's go and try to solve some problems and apply the steps given to you. For this problem, Shella and Ruby are sisters. If Shella is twice as old as Ruby and the product of their ages is 98, how old are they now? So we are looking for their ages by translating verbal phrases to mathematical equations. Now let's solve the problem by following the steps. For step 1, we have to analyze the problem. As mentioned a while ago, sketching or drawing the problem will help you picture out the problem. So let's do the block diagram. So we have Ruby and Shella. And we will represent their age with a block and you will notice that both blocks are the same size so assume that they have the same age but we don't know what their age are then let's analyze the problem it says that Shella is twice as old as Ruby it means whatever age is Ruby now Shella doubles that number so in our drawing Shella must have two blocks of the same size then le let's represent those blocks with a variable and let's start with ruby as x remember you can use any letters you want but since x is commonly used let's stick to x if ruby is x so shella should be 2x since shella has two blocks that are rep that represent her age then in the problem, it says the product of their ages is 98. So it means both of these variables should have the value of 98 when multiplied. 
Okay, now that we completely analyze the problem, let's translate it into an equation. What equations are we going to formulate? This one where both their ages are multiplied and the product is 98. So x is multiplied to 2x which is equal to 98. There we have our equation. Then let's solve and state our answer after. So x times 2x is equal to 98. Let's multiply x with 2x. We get 2x squared. Then let's translate the equation to standard form. We need to transpose 2 in 2x squared to the other side of equation by dividing it by itself to both sides of the equation. So 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 98 divided by 2 is 49. So we have x squared is equal to 49. Then let's solve for the x by extracting its roots. So let's put the square root symbol to both sides. So square root of x squared is x and positive and negative values of square root of 49 is 7. We have two answers, positive 7 and negative 7. And we will use positive 7 since there is no negative value in age. So x is equal to 7. So let's go back to our diagram where Ruby is x and Shella is 2x. Now that we have the answer of x which is 7 and x is represented by Ruby, so Ruby is 7, then let's solve Shella's age. Let's substitute 2x where x has the value of 7. So 2 times 7 which is equal to 14. Therefore, Ruby is 7 years old while Shella is 14 years old. Then let's check and verify if our answers are all true. So let's go back to our equation. x times 2x is equal to 98. Now let's substitute those variables with our answer. Let's see if we arrive with the same value of 98. So x is 7 and 2x is 14. Then 7 times 14 is 98. Therefore, our answers are all correct. Let's have another example. Ziki is 5 years older than his friend Kirsten. If the product of their ages is 50, how old are they now? Again, let's start by analyzing the problem and still apply the block method. We have Kirsten and Ziki with the same size of blocks. And looking at the problem, Ziki is 5 years older, so we need to add another small block to Ziki to represent the additional value of his age, which is 5. To represent them, we say Kirsten is x and Ziki is x plus 5. And again, stated in the problem that the product of their age is 50. There you go. Then let's formulate them into an equation. So we have x times x plus 5 is equal to 50. Then let's solve the equation. Let's rewrite the equation into standard form. Let's distribute x to x plus 5. x times x is x squared and x times 5 is 5x. Then let's transpose 50 to the other side so we can have the standard form. We will have x squared plus 5x minus 50 is equal to 0. From here, we are now going to solve the equation, this time by factoring. Let's create two quantities. Then let's start factoring x squared. So we get x and x. 
Now, since our third term is negative, it means both signs will be opposite. We have negative and positive. Then, let's factor the third term where its factor must be the sum or difference of the middle term. And 50 has three pairs of factors. We have 1 and 50, 2 and 25, and 5 and 10. Now, let's identify which factors is appropriate. Let's check them by adding or subtracting the factors and should result to 5. So, if we will add 1 and 50, we will get 51. And if we will subtract 1 and 50, we will get 49. So, 1 and 50 is not the right pair of factors. How about 2 and 25? If we will add them, we will get 27. But if we will subtract them, we will get 23. Still, that pair of factors is not the correct answer. And let's go to 5 and 10. If we will add them, we will get 15. But if we will subtract them, 5 and 10, we will get 5. So that means that 5 and 10 are the correct pair of factors. So we have 5 and 10. You might ask why 5 is negative and 10 is positive. Remember, when we subtract integers, we always use the sign of the bigger value. And since our middle term is positive 5x, our bigger factor should be a positive. Okay, hope that you are following. So our value for x is 5 and negative 10. Again, you might wonder why negative 5 becomes 5 and positive 10 becomes negative 10. Remember, we still need to transpose both values to the opposite side of the equation. That is why they get the opposite sign also. Then we will again use the positive value which is 5 because there is no negative value in age. Then let's go back to our diagram. Since Kirsten has the variable x, so he is 5 years old. Then let's solve Zeke's age. Let's substitute x plus 5 to 5 plus 5, which is equal to 10. So therefore, Zeke is 10 years old while Kirsten is 5 years old. Finally, let's check and verify our answer. Let's get again our equation x times x plus 5 is equal to 50. Then let's substitute our answer to the variables. So x is 5 and x plus 5 is 10. So 5 times 10 is equal to 50. So it proves that our answers are all true. That's it. I hope this video will help you. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. Thank you and see you in our next lesson.